Welcome to Solid Camp Professor. I'm Sydney, your Solid Camp Professor, with one of many videos available to you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We'll start creating a new tool table by going into Solid Cam, Tool Library, and Create Tool Library. In this case, we're using it for milling, so we'll create one for milling. Now, in the dialog that opens up right now, it asks us for a name for the tool table. We'll call it tool table one. And there's also another option for related machines. Now, the option of related machines is that if we choose a specific machine, it'll automatically put the tools in the plapper turret that exists in that machine. If there aren't different turrets in the machine, you can leave this blank. We'll just click on OK. And now we have an empty tool table. Now, to create a new tool in the tool table, we'll go to the icon on the bottom where it says Add Milling Tool. We'll click on it, and we have here the list of all the different tools that can be created within SolidCAD itself. And I'll choose for this particular case an end mill. Now, Let's first take a look at the topology of the tool itself. The topology of the tool is exactly how the tool will actually look. The size, the length, the amount of flutes it has, and so on and so forth. The actual tool itself, the build of the tool. Now, each tool that we create can be created regardless of what system your machine is working in, whether it be in the metric system or in the inch system. Each tool can be created either metric or inch. So for example, I'll choose the option of millimeters and I'll create a tool that's of the diameter of 16 millimeters. Now note, the moment I go to arbor diameter, you'll see that the arbor automatically turns to 16 as well. Obviously, if we have a different arbor diameter, I can change this. Now also note that as I'm going along in this field over here, if we take a look at the diagram on the right hand side, you can see that each area as its initials shown over here, AD as shown over here, the arbor diameter, is actually highlighted. So I can actually go and highlight these fields itself to fill in that field as shown over here. Go back to the AD, the arbor diameter, and it'll go back to that area as well. The next group we have in here refers to the length of the tool itself. The length of the tool can also be done separately, either in metric or in inch. So I'll create a tool where its total length of the tool is 80 millimeters. The total length, as shown over here, is the actual full length of the tool as it comes from the manufacturer. Next, we have outside holder. How much is the tool sticking outside of the holder itself? The next field, the shoulder length. As shown over here, if there is a shoulder on it, what's the actual length of the shoulder itself? And last, as far as the length goes, is the cutting length. The cutting length is the actual cutting length of the flutes themselves. Now note that the cutting length or any of these lengths over here cannot be larger than the value that's above it. For example, if I were to put here cutting length of 31 millimeters and go to the next field on top, shoulder length, Note on the bottom, it gives me a note that the cutting length cannot be greater than the shoulder length. So it must be less than the shoulder length or equal to. If I put 30 over there, then this note will disappear. The same thing with outside holder. If the outside holder is less than the shoulder length, I'll say 29, you'll note I'll get another message saying, that the shoulder length cannot be greater than outside in the holder and so on and so forth for all of these fields as well. So I'll put this back at say uh, 45 and here we have 
are lengths. Now we have at the bottom the number of flutes. How many flutes do we have in the tool? So let's say this is a tool that has three flutes. I'll put in a value of three. Now let's go to the top at the moment and let's look at these fields over here. The first we have here the number. What is the actual number of that tool corresponding to the position that it will be inside the turret on the machine? Over here, we have a description describing what that tool actually is. Now, this is an optional field. You do not have to put anything in there if you don't want to. Sometimes I recommend actually putting a value in there, putting something in there that will actually differentiate this tool from any other tool that you may have, especially if it's a special tool. For more videos on SolidCam Professor, please go to our website www.solidcam.com and look for the tab called SolidCam Professor. Thank you for joining us on SolidCam Professor. Take care and have a nice day.